Good evening, House of Healingites. God bless you tonight. Time for the deep things of God, Tuesday night. Ready to rumble. This Friday night is our Halloween seminar. That's, that's usually pretty wild. That's a wild one here. This one? All my outfits are new. Clickers aren't new. <laughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> All right. Anybody have a testimony? <laughs> Ma'am, go ahead. Where's the hand? Uh, like. There it goes. Hold on a minute. This is a good story here. I want to get, get on YouTube. That sounds like a good one. Not too many women throw their husbands down a mine shaft. So anyway, it was like a pre-mine shaft. They had dug and there wasn't anything to find, so they let it go. So it was like 20 feet deep. And I told him, don't go by that hole. And the next thing I know, he's falling in backwards, doing a backflip. And I'm watching this whole thing go down. Wow. So then for two days, we were in Disneyland after that. He decided to, we were going to Disneyland. So we went to Disneyland, and I noticed that he was coughing up blood. So we went into the ER, and they did a full workup, CAT scan, and they found three gross in his lower lobe that we would have never found if it wasn't for the fall. Wow. So even though... They're saying that they want to take the lobe out, even though that, if it would have ruptured, it could have caused, you know, a lot of damage. Oh, wow. So I praise God that he fell in the hole. Oh, that is great. <laughs> All right. Can anybody top that testimony? <laughs> no, okay. That was excellent. All right. Seminar Friday, radio programs every day, morning and afternoon, Monday through Friday. All the radio programs are always on soundcloud.com slash hardcore-christianity. Gracias for your donations. Appreciate your helping us pay the bills. Uh, if you switch over to Good Search, you can help us pay bills quicker. Switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our uh, charity name, Hardcore Christianity. They will send us money every time you do something on the internet. Corina and I are heading out to... Restoration of Hope Ministries, uh, Skid Row Deliverances. Skid Row. Have you ever been to Skid Row? It is incredulous. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't even see that in Africa. That's how bad that is. Anyway, I'll be holding two services. This is for the staff. And this one is the service for deliverance for uh, the uh, Skid Rowites. They have a uh, service there every Saturday. And they've been having strange manifestations in the service, so he contacted me. And apparently Karina knows this guy, so he's a great guy and everything, so he seems really nice. So that ought to go well, and I appreciate your prayers on that one. That's a hellhole out there, and the devil's going to be trying to stop everything. Would appreciate your prayers. Part 2, Romans 8, and I threw in as a bonus, Romans chapter 12. All right, we went over this last week. I'll briefly touch on it. Romans is the ABCs of Christianity. If you don't understand Romans, Christianity will always be confusing to you. You'll always be confused. And here's the chapters Paul goes over. It's incredible. Hebrews is like the Jewish book of Romans. Paul wrote that one for the Jews, and it's kind of like Romans. Really fantastic material. But this is for the Gentiles, and this is for us. That would be us. And he goes over these issues in these chapters, and then he goes in the chapter we've been studying, Deliverance from Sin and the Law, and then tonight, 12 through 15, are various Christian doctrines, which I thought would be helpful. Then he closes out with some personal stuff and thank yous. In the book of Romans, we are introduced to eight new laws of God. And there they are. Laws of God. 
down there. Moses, nature, faith, the mind, sin, righteousness, God's laws, the law of the Spirit. Really interesting stuff. Fantastic. And here's where we left off after part one last Tuesday. And here's, here we go now. All right. This is the Holy Ghost part of the chapter, which is the most fun. Uh, as you remember before this, we were talking about different people groaning. Remember that? And we yeah. went over nature groaning. And then we went over with Christians groaning. And Christians are groaning to get out of this body, to go to glory. And nature itself, plants, animals, whatever, they are in their own way groaning to get out of their stinking mess to go into the new world order and the renovation of the planet Earth and the restoration of it from everything Adam uh, shoved down our throats. Literally shoved down our throats. We had no chance to make, give an opinion on it. We had no chance to get out of it. He literally shoved it down our throats. So you never asked to be born, you got born. Most people had to had the chance to be born, or many people wouldn't have taken it. That's right. But you don't get a choice. You don't get a choice. And Adam stole it from us. We were all born in sin. Then it says, likewise, the Holy Spirit helps our infirmities. So Nanti Lobanamai means stays with us, helps us, and supports us with our infirmities. What are those? The usual stuff. Our weaknesses as human beings. We have all kinds of weaknesses. We got a whole rack of weaknesses as a human being. And the Holy Ghost is there to help each and every one of them Amen. as we groan our way home. We know... Because when you are living in this life as a Christian, this statement hits you virtually every day of your life. It just hits you. There's always something popping up. You don't quite know what direction to go with. And the Holy Ghost is always there for that occasion. The Spirit itself makes intercession. Autos is he in Greek. It's a, he's a person, not an it. The Jehovah Witnesses say he's an it or an energy exuding from Jehovah. That's, that's not true. There's too many personal pronouns used of him, particularly in Acts, for him to be an energy source or an energy field. He's actually a person, third person of the Trinity, and he also is groaning. So now we've got a whole crew of groaners. Amen. Christians are groaning, <laughs> nature is groaning, and now the Holy Ghost is groaning. Christianity is a groan fest, in a way, so to speak. He making intercession for us. Now, this isn't casual dinner prayers. This is synagmas. He is sighing when you're sighing in intercessory prayer. And that book back there, the best prayer book I ever read was that one right there, Praying Hide. And the, he would go into groaning and sighing. He learned it from this person. So he and the Holy Ghost would have a groaning, sighing session that when he got to the service, bloop, everybody falls out of their chairs, crying, weeping, repenting, and getting saved. He had developed the art of spiritual groaning. And sometimes you're so in that mood where all, you don't know what to say or how to say it. You just, oh, oh, God help me. You don't even know how to pray. And that's what it is. It's Groaning in the spirit. He will groan with you. That's what it means. Sonogmos means deep, heavy sighing, heaving, so to speak. We cannot be uttered. In other words, he can pray in ways that can't even be put into words. It's too deep. Alalitus. Can't even, it's unspeakable. That's the same Greek word Paul used when he said he went to heaven, he heard all these conversations. When he came back, I couldn't put them into words. That is correct. Yes. Remember that? Yes. So we've got a groan fest here, 
but it also could be moaning, toiling, sighing. You know, uh, work is groaning. The word could have been used in that context, you know. When I was in college, I got a job, I told you, at the Iowa Beef Processors plant. And I worked on the processing side where the frozen meat came down through the conveyor belts into the trailers for the transport drivers. And that job, they want somebody with a very, very low IQ <laughs> and a strong back, dumb enough to do that kind of work. And you're done doing anything but taking boxes, I'm not even making this up, boxes of beef, frozen beef of varying weights depending upon the cuts. The chucks were the nightmares because some of those boxes would weigh 100 pounds. And I couldn't even be put on a trailer of chucks. I didn't have the strength or endurance to make it. So they take the bigger guys, biggest guys, and stick them with a chuck. <laughs> and when you're stuck with a chuck, trust me, it's not fun. I know what you're thinking. I'm married to one. But no, this is a different kind of chuck. <laughs> and you load, that's all you do. See? And your mind kind of checks out. You kind of drift. And it's freezing in there because you're on the processing side. Well, that's in a way groaning here. That's toiling, groaning. See, and that's what we're doing spiritually. That's what we're doing physically. We're groaning to get out of this body. Nature wants to get out of it. And the Holy Ghost is groaning with us, is what he's saying. It's meant to be encouraging that he's there with you, groaning, toiling, moaning, struggling. Every step of the way, he's there for you. That's what Paul's trying to tell us. 827, he that searches the hearts, he's talking about the Holy Ghost and Jehovah, knows what the phronema, thinking pattern of the Holy Spirit is and God. They know each other's thinking patterns because they think the same way. The Lord Jesus is never coming up with an idea he doesn't have and vice versa. They're always on the same page, so to speak. So you can't go to one and say, you know, I'd really like a new Cadillac and a mansion. And the other one go, no, I don't think you're ready for it. I think you're ready. They never have that argument. They're always perfectly in unity on your prayer requests. Yeah. So Jehovah knows what the phronema, the thinking pattern of the Holy Ghost is, because he always groans for us according to Father's will. He knows Father's will better than anybody, so he always stays on that track. So you can't possibly go wrong. 828. We know, Edu, we see that all things work together for good to those that love God. Now, oops, here we've got problems again. Bad translation, misinterpretations. This verse is massively misinterpreted. Okay, you're born here and you're born again here. Let's say that, okay? Now you're on your Christian life and you're supposed to be going this way with your Christian life, okay? Most Christians do this. They have a big shot there and then uh, 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 and then there's a backslide in here. That's most most Christians. Everybody starts out with a big love burst bang. First love thing, and then it tanks. Okay? But assuming Paul's text here, we see that all things in this process, not this process, this process here, okay, this process, no. The verse doesn't apply to that. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Oops, it's a present active tense Greek verb. It's not love. Noun. Agapasin. Who are continuing to love him. Repetitively loving him. That's why the verse appears to be false. It isn't false. It was translated poorly. If you are continuing to express your love to him, 
all things on this road here work together for good, even in the bad spots, which everybody has. No one lives a Christian life like this unless they die. You get saved here and you drop dead two hours later, you have a perfect Christian future. This is for people who didn't die and who did not go back into sin. Tr reading it in reverse, we see, I can see this happening in people's lives. I see that all things do not work out together for good to those who do not continuously, repetitively love Him. That's how it should have been taught. That's why people get so confused. All this crap's happening. Well, it must be God's will. No. Check, recheck, then check it again. Are you dead with a perfect Christian life? Are you first loving and then tanking? Or are you gradually living the life of a disciple with wins and losses which can't be avoided? So this is a conditional it's totally conditional. Conditional on this process. Correct. You continue, continuing to show your love for God. If you're not showing your love for God, that verse does not apply to you. Okay, so you're young and single and you meet some guy. Oh, he's looking good. He's packing. <laughs> he got him a good job. He's a bagger at Albertsons. <laughs> and you go, God wants me to marry him. Whoops. Uh-oh. Come on now. See, this, then, then we're going to get this tank system. That then is not going to apply. Because you didn't check with the person you married first. With the Lord and get two or three witnesses. So the verse does not apply to you, even though you desperately want it to. We all desperately want it to read the other way and apply under any circumstances. It's not, as he said, it's a conditional verse. And two, there's a second condition in the verse. <clears throat> I just illustrated it with her marrying the bagger at Albertsons, who are the called. You have to be called and continuously showing your love for Father for that verse to apply to you. If your life sucks and everything's falling apart, check it, red, check it again, red flag it, then red flag it again, and examine yourself to see whether you be in the faith because, as they say in Bangkok, something wrong. Something wrong with your Christian life. And that verse is not applying to you you need to find out why it doesn't apply and what went wrong. One amen. All right, so let's continue to teach the heathen. Streamers, you stay there. You're good people. 829, here it is. 829. Now, he switches over to the, this incredible section. And also, <clears throat> this section has caused nothing but problems in the Christian world, but we'll clear it up. Whom God foreknew. <coughs> Prognosco. What does that mean? That means before you were born, God knew you and understood you as a person. Yeah. How does he do that? Yeah. Haven't got a clue. And... He not only knew who you were beforehand, pro, gnosko, understand, previously, he did, pro arizo, preordain you. Predestination. What's it like? Thanks for asking. It's like a bus. What do I know about buses? I used to be 
<laughs> a city bus driver and you didn't work. I'm here, you're down here. I used to be a city bus driver for the city of Wichita, Kansas. And they are very happy. I'm no longer there. I had a few incidences, we'll put it that way. Predestination is like a city bus. God, in eternity past, a billion years before you were born, knew who you were. And he preordained you to sit in that seat on the glory bus to heaven. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let me talk to the whole planet right now. Seven billion people. Let me talk to all seven billion of you. God knew seven billion people a billion years before they were conceived. How does he do that? Haven't got a clue. And he preordained every single one of them to be on that seat bound for glory. There's a seat on that bus preordained with your name on it before you were conceived. Egg, sperm. Conceived. Not me, but a woman. There's the bus. That's your name. God, in eternity past, knew who you were, John, and picked a seat out for you on the glory bus to heaven. John, Ahmed, Chingak, uh, you name it. Seven billion seats, glory bound for heaven. Amen. He preordained you, Praorizo, preordained you to be like his son so you could get on the bus. For Christ was the first one on the bus. Prototokos means the first in a line of others. Here's the first one, and then here's the others. See? Hopefully, in God's mind, seven billion. Okay, we know that's not near going to happen. See the difference? This is Prototokos, this one's not. Right? So what's the, I don't have any change, but if I pulled my change out and dropped, that would be the first coin I dropped. Yes. The Prototokos coin. I, correct? Yes. Absolutely. Jesus was both. He was Mary's firstborn son, Prototokos, first of others. He had four brothers. He was father's monogonese, only son. Different Greek word. You can dispel any false doctrine using the Greek text. And the Catholic doctrine crash and burns as, it, it just, as I just spoke it to you. There's no way to support that Jesus was an only child to Mary. Otherwise, it would have been monogenes, not prototokos. So the satanic cult thing dies there. He is the firstborn, first one, first one guy on the bus of many brothers. Mm -hmm. Who are they? Uh, all, of us. all of us. Jesus was Mary's prototokos, firstborn son. There were four others, so there are five total. He was monogonese, father's only birth child. This is my son, the beloved. And he was the first of many brethren resurrected with the 
from the dead with a new supernatural miracle body, or whatever that thing is he's got. This is making sense? See the difference? So then you don't misinterpret a verse. And there it is. See? So, this slide explains what I just explained over here. Prototicus would be the first one in line, as I said last week, when I'd go to Kmart. I try to be the first one in the blue eyed special. You weren't a blue shirt, sir. You know what I'm talking about. I have the first one there. See? I was not monogonese, the only person there, because a bunch of crazy shoppers come up behind me. Yes, sir. You used to be proud of that, but now it's embarrassing. Here is Jesus Christos, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, God, the Messiah. Right? So the Prototicus would not be these, it would be that one. The Monogonese would be that one, and these would be non-existent. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did what? Preordain. Okay. Now notice that Greek word doesn't mean force. I'm ordaining you to be in this seat on the way to glory. That's your seat. You will never sit in this seat. You will never sit in her seat. If she's not in that seat, it glows home empty. Because yes. no one else is preordained to sit in that seat on God's bus to glory. It stays empty till she sits in it. And stays in it. That's a different Bible study. You can get off the bus as well as get on the bus. Yep. <coughs> That's a different study. Whom he did preordain to sit in that seat. He also called you to sit in that seat. And that's what preachers and ministers, we Christians, we, hey, we try to go out and render a harvest. And as to whom he called, he declared innocent of their crimes and sins. As if you'd never sinned. So you can get on the bus sinless. And whom he declared innocent and not guilty in a court of law, bang, he then, doxa, heads off to glory. You end up in glory. And the Christians are Father's glory. See, you wouldn't be living this dog poop life of yours if you knew that you were Father's glory. You wouldn't be living like a piece of crap. You would be a completely changed person. But you never read this verse, so you don't know what's going on. Except now you do. You were preordained. You were called by God. You were declared innocent sinless, not guilty, you were glorified. You are Father's glory. See, I don't look like it. Well, that's true. I don't look like it now, but when you see me in glory, I'm going to be looking like some monster stud. Okay? I won't have any better clothes because I'm at the top there. But if you knew you were God's glory, you wouldn't get up every morning and trash yourself. That'd be the last thing you'd do. You wouldn't do it anymore. Because you know that would be sacrilegious. You know that would be a sin to call what God has glorified garbage. You'd stop it. You are, wow, preordained, not by force. Okay. okay. You are born in America. You are a citizen. You are not required to stay here. You can move to any dead blame country you are in the mood to, 
or take on another citizenship, or you can renounce this one if you choose to do it. Correct? The same thing is true in glory. You do not have to get on that bus, but when the bus leaves, your seat will be empty. No one else will be on your bus because you were predestined to be in that seat and only that seat. And if you're not in it, nobody else sits in that seat. It goes home empty. Yeah, you lost your chance to go. Preordained doesn't mean you have to accept your seat or your assignment or your certificate. You can get a degree from a college and not show up to graduation and not get your certificate. Well, you were ordained or you were given the degree, you were certified, you were licensed, what have you, whatever, but you don't have to go get the thing, do you? No, it's up to your free will. Yes, sir. I, uh, I had to take summer school uh, when I was in high school because I was shy of getting my diploma. Yeah. I got my diploma and I got my diploma in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> There's always somebody that beats the system, but this system here on the bus, the glory. <laughs> That can't be beaten. Okay, that's God's system, and that's how it works. Okay? You've been declared not guilty and innocent. Why? Because you're a good person? No, you're a piece of crap. Christ stepped into your place, took your judgment, and took your punishment for sin, and took the guilty verdict from God in your place. Now you are justified through Him. It was mercy, not merit. It was merit in the Old Testament. I did this, I did that, I quit that, I quit that. In the New Testament, it's all grace. And the pre-down payment for your glory in heaven, it explains, is the Holy Ghost, Christ in us, the hope of glory. These are great texts my opinion. Romans 31, here it is, 831. What shall we say to these things if God then be for us? You look on this laundry list of the incredible, and you're, now you're left with a question, why am I living this sucked up life? <coughs> That's the question. What's going on here? How can all these benefits be mine and my life stink? What shall we say then, Paul, hypotheticals? If God is for us, who can be against us? Good question. Because all these things he's talking about doing for you can't be done by anybody else in the universe. You are on the glory bus. That's your seat. That is the most privileged spot a human being can ever sit in on the way to glory. So, hey, you don't like me? Read this one, 31. Just tell them that. From now on, if you run into somebody who doesn't like you, and I've met a lot of you and a lot of people don't like you, just go ahead and say 31 to them. They won't know what you're saying. Next time your husband or wife reams you out, 31. Honey, 31, out the door. <laughs> because if somebody don't like you, who cares? Who can be against us? The government, the IRS, oh, the spooks, oh, they're out there. No, 31 of them. It's right there. If you use it, it'll save your life. 32. Oh, then you can nail them with this. So Paul then proves what he says, since God can be for you. God gave his most prized possession. What do you give when you've got everything? You give the most important thing to you so that you could have a seat on that bust, predestined, preordained, called, pre known on the way to glory. If God doesn't listen to me, he doesn't know who I am. Hey, fool, you were known a billion years before you fell out of your mother's womb. <laughs> Don't tell me he doesn't know who you are. 
He knows exactly who you are. And He preordained you to sit in that seat before you were born to come home to glory. Your life stinks. That's your fault, not His. I just explained it to you. That's predestination. I believe in this predestination. The other, the false doctrine is the kooks say, oh, God chose you to go to heaven and she's going to hell. That's not, that's an imbecility. Total insanity. God does not choose you to go to hell and him to go to heaven. Calvinism is false doctrine. Uh, half that crap they taught was false doctrine. Half of it. I've looked at it and it's embarrassing. Again, if you don't, you can disprove any false doctrine if you check out the Greek text. You can prove almost any false doctrine if you just use some of these translations, unfortunately, including the King James. That's a little rough in a couple areas, okay? So it says, God did not spare his only son. That's why you can't lose, because God gave everything he had, the best of what he had. He delivered it up for all, all people. All, seven billion. Not just, not the white people. What are you, nuts? Not just Jews, all. That was his plan from the beginning. I'm going to get everybody, if I can. So since he already did all that, he already foreknew you, predestined you, called you, justified you since he already did all of that will he not then give you the rest of heaven and the new Jerusalem and a rapture and a new glorious body good God yes <laughs> if he's already done this much and it's unbelievable why is how the devil tell you he wasn't going to do the rest of it how did he convince you of that? What are you? A dummy? I say no. All you got to do is read the text. If God gave me all of that, duh, he's going to naturally give me the rest of it. Get on the bus. How do you need to get on the bus? You won't. You open the door there, see? I used to drive a bus, and then you go over and find a seat, and then you drop your fat fanny right on that seat. You stay right on that glory road. And don't get off of it like these backsliders. That's how you ride a bus. You sit down like that. 33. Now Paul goes to another interesting argument. It's fascinating. <coughs> He says he knows he's going to get a bunch of naggers and naysayers like you do in your life and your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. They always say negative things. So Paul's covering it here ahead of time. He jumps ahead for us. Who will charge God's elect? You. Okay. I get all these massive benefits from eternity past. He already wanted me to have them. He already pre-chose me. He preordained me. I... I'm getting everything, plus I'm getting all this other stuff. New glorified body, trip to heaven, new Jerusalem. I got it made. So somebody comes along and says, oh, that's a bunch of crap. That don't make any sense. Look who, what a rotten person you are. You're a certified jerk. See the argument? If God's going to give you all this stuff, the devil's going to come, come along and say, well, you're not getting nothing. Look at you. Right? Who's going to lay a charge to you? Nobody can. Why? Because this whole thing was God's idea. It's not my fault or my doing. God justified me. You got a problem with me. You think I stink? Take it up with Him. Oh, aren't you seeing it? Yeah, everybody around you, they looked at you. They said, yeah, you're a lousy husband, you're a lousy wife, you're, you're ignorant, you're stupid, you're fat, you're, you're ugly. They got all these negative things to say about you. 
That's got nothing to do with the chapter. This was God's idea to choose you before you were a hill of beans. God chose you before you got saved when you were a whore and a liar and a cheat and a thief and a psycho. He chose you before that. You're going to gripe to me about my problems? Hey, take it up with him. It's his idea. He started it. <laughs> what am I doing right now? I'm punching a ice pick in the eye of every rejection demon in this room tonight. Yeah. I'm just taking an ice pick. Out. Hey, oh you, oh, you got in in third grade. Huh? Yeah, take that. You can't keep rejection demons if you can read this. Right. Hey. Did you hear what Brother Mike said? You jerk off. Yeah, he heard me. Trust me. He heard me what I said. So he's going to try and stop it. He's going to put some crap in your mind right now. See, you're going to not listen to what I just said. I know him. Listen, doofus. I got called before the foundation of the world. I was known before you were created, you piece of stinking spiritual crap. That's Arabic. And listen up. I was preordained, you stinking spirit, to sit in that seat long before I was born. I've been called by God before I was born. When I, before I got saved, when I was living in sin, I was already called by God. You got any criticism of me, you stinking devil? Take it up with Father. This whole thing's his idea. Had nothing to do with me. I just received it by grace. You won't hear this in church. 34. Oh. These people are going to come at you. The demons are going to come at you. Yes. Who is he that condemns? We went over this verse in verse 1. Catacrino. Judging, judging you with a negative verdict. The verdict came down in a guilty judgment. It's Christ who died. Had nothing to do with me. And rose again. Had nothing to do with me. And now sits at the right hand of God, interceding for me, while the Holy Ghost is groaning for me here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jack, listen to me, baby. You can't lose. Right. He's groaning for you here, and interceding for you there, and your seat on the train to glory is reserved only for you. Yeah. And can't be taken by any other person. If it goes to glory empty, that's because you didn't get in there. What do you do with these people casting aspersions on you and judging you? And You say, hey, you're looking at the wrong person. I had nothing to do with this. This is not me. This is not me. This was mercy. I had nothing to do with it. You're pointing your finger at the wrong fool. These rejection teams are taking beating tonight. They're getting slapped around at a minimum. You've got two intercessors. You've got the Holy Ghost groaning for you here. And the Son of God interceding for you there. You can't lose. People don't understand how what an elevated position a born again Christian is. Nobody understands, including the Christians. They think they're walking garbage. They're actually elevated beings in the universe. They are actually the glory of God. Granted, when you look at a human being, that isn't working out too good. I get that. But that's because carnal Christians only see what they see. Real Christians are able to see into the spirit world and see truth 
behind what they see. There's a difference. 35. Then he goes into another incredible argument which is frequently misinterpreted. Check this out. These verses don't mean what they say. Appear to say, excuse me. Who will koridzo cause us to depart? The verse is misinterpreted. Check it out. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? If you don't know what that verse says, it sounds like Paul's asking you, who's going to be able to separate you from God? God's too powerful. They're not going to be able to do anything to him. That's not what it's saying. He's talking about you leaving him. Then he says 17 big reasons why people leave God. The verse is misinterpreted. Who will separate? Nobody can separate me from God. God's too powerful. Wrong. He's not talking about God. He's talking about us. Well, tribulation, philipsis, pressure, every born again Christian lives with this pressure. Every one of them get pressured in some form, fashion, or manner. It's impossible to live a pressureless, pressure-free life. There's no bed of roses here. There's no utopia. You're crazy if you think that's true. Notice that has nothing to do with God. God doesn't Know what pressure it pressure to the Holy Ghost is something you put in tires. He has no idea what pressure is. You try to pressure him, and you go, What are you doing? What is that? He doesn't get it. Distress. Sanakaria. What's that mean? Well, that was a weird Greek word that means you're trying to fit down a narrow hallway, you know, if things are closing in on you. You ever felt like that in life? Things are closing in on you. Every Christian has felt, 100% of Christians have had that feeling, me numerous times included. I felt like the walls were coming in on me. Does that bother God? It's not, don't you see? He's talking about us separating ourselves from Him. Not Him separating ourselves from Him because He's under too much pressure and He's collapsing. You've got to be kidding me. The Holy Ghost never collapses. Shall these other things? No, of course not. Peril. What's that? Can do us. Dangerous situations. There, the Holy Ghost is never in danger. He doesn't understand danger. He's never in danger. Makaira, what's that? Pull a knife on somebody. Stabbing them. James? Spear. Okay, well, this is not the spear. This is the knife. It was translated as sword because I think King James, they were trying to get a better translation for the king to get it okay. So a sword sounds more gallant. It's actually pulling a knife on somebody. Doesn't matter. It still hurts. <laughs> then Paul quotes from Psalms chapter 44. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. We, us. See, he's talking about us. What will we do to separate ourselves from God? Not what separates Him from us. He can't be separated from you. No. In all these things, what things? The big 17 here. See? We are, hey, where's the rest of them? Oh, okay, I know. In all those things, all those, these things, that and next, we are more than... Verse 38. Paul says, in light of all this evidence I've given you, here's my conclusion. And I firmly believe this, he says. I'm, I'm buying into this divine revelation. All these things can't even separate us from the God. 
We will not allow these things to separate us. Even if it's things out of your control. That's correct. These things make you closer to God here. No, not necessarily there. Hopefully there. Dead. Doesn't matter. Angels. Who cares? Fallen angels have nothing to do with us. We're covered in the blood. RK. Spiritual principalities. Demons. Powers. Supernatural power. From the spirit world. Satan. Angels. Demons. You has he quickened. This is Ephesians now. I added this as a bonus. You were dead. You were dead. See, you were dead. But in spite of the fact you were dead, you had already been foreknown and called and predestined to sit in that seat. You were dead, spiritually, not physically. In times past, verse 2, you walked according to the age of cosmos humanity this world the human world and this age we're in of humanity according to the prince same greek word principality of the authority of the air the atmosphere demons travel through the atmosphere yes. they attack people by traveling through the atmosphere Shh, bang they travel down family trees generation they don't ambulate like humans or animals they're spirit beings like angels they transport themselves somehow how they do it I don't know but they don't walk around like I do and that is the same as the spirits the demons now working in the sons we us of Ethia unbelievers People who do not believe God's word. You know what it's saying there? These are actually rebellion demons. That cause people not to believe. And there's the last 17. He says, things currently happening, we're not going to let anything happen to me now that I'm going to separate myself from God, is what he's saying. I'm not going to let anything in the future that I'm involved in cause me to separate myself from God. You following this? It's not God, it's us. This thing's been massively misinterpreted. And, hoopsama, some elevated spectacular thing in the heavens is not going to cause me to separate myself from God. Bathos, something from the depths of the ocean, I don't care what it is down there, is not going to cause me to separate myself from God. Now Paul is doing his best to include everything. See, He's throwing everything into the hamper. He's unloading the wagon right now. Anywhere, up there, down there, I am not leaving God and in fact then he finally throws in the coup de gras anything in Katisa anything in creation you name it you name it anything anything God created is not going to cause me to walk out on father Why do people backslide? Because of one of those 17 things, except death, make it 16. On that list, tribulation, pressure, persecute, whatever it is, the people start to leave God. God never leaves a backslider. A backslider walked out on him. God never makes the first move. Hey, you said something I don't like. Bend over. Boom! You're out the door. No! He wants that person to get on their knees and ask for forgiveness. He rushes over the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, pours it right on it, bang, it's gone. That's what he wants. But the people 
don't necessarily want that because they're believing lies or distortions or delusions and they turn their back on God for differing, varying reasons. They turned their back on God for no reason on Father's end. He already knew who you were a billion years ago. He already called you. He predestined you to sit in that seat. He knew all about you when you were a rotten sinner and called you anyway. On Judgment Day, there aren't any excuses. There's no way to point their finger at him because he never did anything wrong. It's always on our end. And we conclude. None of those things I went over shall be able to cause me to put distance between me and the Lord. I'm not doing it. No matter what happens, he and I are staying tight. Why? Because I, no matter what I do or say, am unconditionally loved by God. What's that? No, you're misinterpreting that, <laughs> sir. We're going to cast those food demons out of that guy tonight. Now, <clears throat> don't you see how this is working here? God did so much for you before you even know who in the hoot he was. After you got saved, you still didn't know all the glorious things he was going to do for you because that's all in your future. So if God gave you all these things in your past and all this stuff in your future, who gives a rat's fanny what you think of me? Your bad feelings and thoughts about me is not going to change my life with Father because I was known before I was born. I was called before I was born. I was predestined to sit in that glory seat before I was born. And in my future, I got nothing but glory ahead of me. So what you think of me rolls off, babe. Now, does that mean you should do something stupid? That's not what it's talking about, making corrections. No, that, you're on, on the wrong track here. This is spiritual. What do you think of you spiritually? If I do something wrong, somebody says, hey, you're screwing up. Well, yeah, absolutely. Make the adjustment and fix it and, and get going. That's not what this is talking about. This isn't a fix your stinky life thing. This is the value of your life. And so none of those 17 things... Even dying, as he said, is going to cause me to separate myself from Father. It's not going to happen. So you can say what you want, do what you want, think what you want. I'm not budging. I'm staying right here in the unconditional love boat. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes, sir. This is good teaching for heathens. Yes, sir. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Now, here we go. Check it out. This is what you're saying. Romans 8, departing from God. No, I am not leaving him. And he goes over 17 issues of the lusts of the flesh. Notice the same number. Happen to catch that? 17 in Romans, 17 in Galatians. Ugh, 17 things. 17 things. These seven things can separate me from God. But, Paul said, I am not leaving God, no matter what happens to me, 17 of them, and I'm not committing those 17 things that will cause me to grieve the Spirit, lose my anointing, and become a shipwrecked spiritual loser.
Just look at yourself. There's 17 of them, if you don't believe me. How'd that go? <laughs> That's chapter 8 of Romans. Arguably, I didn't say it is, but arguably the greatest chapter in all the Bible. Ar not arguably, I didn't say it was. Don't, don't, ooh, don't send me an email. I just, I just got one today with a bunch of F's and MF's in it. Yeah. In fact, it was over that uh, flyer I sent out. I sent out a flyer for the Halloween seminar. Friday. Man, I got, somebody got tripped on that and got, questions? Uh, Romans 8, questions? Yes, sir. Has anybody got any of those things that you, you know how you, what are they calling things you put on the people having a heart attack and trying to, defibrillator, can somebody get me a defibrillator for this guy? Okay, any real questions in this section? Any in that one? None in that one? That, there's one, sir. Yes, sir. No one talks about the parable of the soil. Let's say that the parable Number the parable of sower. Help me sower, yeah. What I say, soil. Yeah. yeah you yeah, threw me off there, sir, and I don't appreciate that. Cause I'm on YouTube. <laughs> Can somebody get this guy out? <laughs> what was the question, sir? Would you say that that would be like something that Jesus taught to correct what he was taught? You mind rewording that? Right? But then Jesus gives the parable of the sower, right? Right. So Different the soils of grout. The, 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 the right. Like yep. The, gotcha. The and that, no. That well, yeah, that's so right. Yeah. Uh, saying, yeah. That I see. I see what you're that saying. What yeah. Thinking? Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it now. He's right. Sorry, I didn't get that first. I, I, I got yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It says Romans in the King James Version that we're predestined in him. Isn't, isn't I just Jesus, read that. Isn't it Jesus said he's predestined and by faith we're along for the ride? Yeah, he did. Jesus said, here's how it works. God said. <laughs> God said, I'm predestining every person on the planet to be on that bus. Okay? Praorizo. That's what the Greek word means. Okay? Bingo. If the seat's not taken, it always stays empty. No one else takes that seat. As it was preordained for you to sit in it. Right there. So, free will, parable of sower, parable of sower, Free will determines who gets on that bus. Mm -hmm. See, forced predestination teaches false doctrines. You're forced to get saved, and you're going to get saved whether you like it or not. And if you don't like it, I'll slap some Christianity into you. And you're going to hell. <laughs> See, no matter, even though, even though you want to get saved, it's going to work out in the end, you're going to hell. And God determined that in eternity. That's a certified licensed crock. Okay, do not ever believe any of that crap. You have to have a PhD to believe that crap. God wants to save everybody and loves everybody. and He wants everybody in heaven. Now he's not going to get his wish, so to speak, unfortunately, and he's going to be hurt over that, but that's his goal or desire and he's trying to use you to go get him. Because you are his glory. So he's sending his glory out to get others to get on that bus. Head on to glory. Brother Mike, this is what you're coming to is basically identity. Last night as I'm speaking to the men, their identities have been built up with all sorts of lies and, and different ideologies that they've grown up with. 
and they don't know who they are in Christ. If right. They truly knew Romans the 8. Found, yeah, there it is. The foundation of which they can launch off of and, and go into this world is amazing because then nothing, everything is meaningless, only Christ. And see, so what he was saying is, is so right. You'll say, you go to any group, uh, pedophiles, alcoholics, drug addicts, any group, any, any, any group where they the screwed up people go to help get some kind of help. Yes. If they knew that before they ever screwed themselves up, God already knew that. Yes. He already knew that and called them yes. and predestined them to be on that glory bus while they were coked out of their mind. While they were fingering third graders, he saw that and called them anyway. If you could get that to his group in their spirits, not just in their heads, they'd never have another drink. You'd never have any more drugs. You'd never sit around letting what somebody else says about you diminish your existence on this planet. It wouldn't even bother you anymore. Hey, you're a royal suck. Bless you, brother. I'm on the glory train to heaven. I didn't even feel that. Didn't even feel when might call me that. Didn't even feel it. Yes. Romans 8 will change your identity of who you are as a person. And so you're groaning and toiling and working. Doing th Somebody's groaning and toiling and working with you, the Holy Ghost. And then somebody in glory is interceding for your success. You got it made in the shade. It's incredible. It's utterly amazing what God thinks of you as a person. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> Let's take a real bad situation. Your brother sodomizes you when you're a kid. Okay, Your other brother beats the living hell out of you all through your childhood. Did you know that the brother that was sodomizing the other brother and be the other brother was beating the other brother was already pre-known by God and was already called by God to find their seat on that bus? Elizabeth. That's why they call it the gospel, Evangelion, glorious good news. It's the greatest news a human can ever hear, what I just said. But it's just hard to imagine why the Lord predestined, you know, having all that in predestination would still allow us to go through those things, even though it's to his glory in the end. No, it's not, a, it's not hard to understand at all. It's all based on free will, okay? You're not a pet. Pets don't have free will, or they have limited free will. Okay? Plants have even less free will, right? Insects, we, they have free will. But human beings are like God. We are made in the likeness and image of God, and we have a mind that God released to you. And God does not have a thing to do with your mind. The devil is trying desperately to get your mind to go negative so he can dominate and control it through brutality and force. He's a beast master. He beats the living stuffing out of people. Father will not take your mind unless you voluntarily release it to him. Very similar angels. <clears throat> However many angels there were, haven't got a clue. My guess is it was millions or I don't know. I have no idea what's up there. Lots of them. I'm gonna say super lot. Well, this this lot over here said, "Hey, we're we're bolting out the door." And God said, Bye -bye. "I'm not stopping you, and I'm not coming back to get you. You're gone." Human beings, Adam bolted out the door just like the devil did, just like the angels. The father said, man, I'm not coming to get them, but I can't take this. I cannot stand it. 
I'm going to go back and get them. Love you, Lord. Hey, Mike down here at the house healing. See me? I know you see me. Are you jealous over that, aren't you? Yeah. Because they knew too much. Now, see, Adam didn't know shoot from Shinola. Okay, all he knew was, hey, there's a plant. There's an apple. Oh, there's Eve. Oh, she's hot. That's all he got. Angels were in glory and saw everything and rejected it. Adam never saw everything. All he had was this Garden of Eden. Yeah, it was great. I'm not putting down the Garden of Eden. Fantastic. Nothing what the angels had. Nothing what Satan had. Satan was the most incredible creation in the history of the universe. God gave Satan everything. He didn't give Adam everything. He wasn't going to make that mistake again, so to speak. Satan had everything and stabbed him in the back. Adam had a lot and stabbed him in the back. But you and I, man, listen up. We had nothing when we crawled down to Calvary. I had nothing to give him. I was out of everything. I had nothing of value. I just crawled in begging for mercy. And I stepped in front of the devil. Stepped in front of the fallen angels. I moved to the bus and took my seat, which they do not have. That's right. That's right. This gospel story is so good. It, they ought to teach this stuff in church. Seriously. <laughs> Honestly, they ought to do it. All right, let's take a quick shot at this. Uh, Chapter 12, yeah. That's one. Now that depends on the person. Okay? So, if the person decides negatively and receives those thoughts from the demons, then yeah, he's, he's going to be a drooling vegetable in a couple of years. But if he says, hey, I don't receive that. I got authority in Christ here. And by the way, God knew I was going to have that before I was born. He called me on that bus, right on that bus, long before that happened to me. And the atonement covers my healing. Yes. Yes. So the person decides basically what happens to themselves. That's correct. Okay? So if you believe and you're going to fight off the lies of the devil, you could be delivered and healed. Yes. So the answer to the question is, it's up to you. Pastor has said from the pulpit, who's a 
did go back to doctors. We did do some things. The Lord healed the cancer, had me do a minor surgery. Um, and in all of that, I pressed in. I pressed into God and I pressed into His Word. And it says that His Word heals all of our diseases. Yes. <coughs> down tonight. Sit up here, sir. What's your name? First name? Pal Pat. Good. Oh, thank God you called me. Love you, buddy. <laughs> Sit right down there. You're getting healed tonight. Amen. <laughs> All right. Anybody else got any comments before we... Yeah. <clears throat> I do not know that, <laughs> but I'm gonna, for the late sake of this, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> okay, we'll talk to Kelly about that and take that under advisement. Thank you. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had a question over there. Statement or something. Yeah, yes, sir. Got a red hat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's great. Yeah, I love Rick. He teaches down here. Oh, yeah. He's great. Oh, okay. But I did not realize, and, and how many seats you're going to fill up on that bus is related directly of how the adversary comes at you. Because I cleaned out mm -hmm. my house, but I didn't know about the seven stronger ones coming. Mm -hmm. And I felt that afterwards. I had the spirit in me. Mm -hmm. I had no guidance. I was still in jail. Yeah. But this, this is not sitting around playing around. No. This is spiritual war. Oh, yeah. The war. Battle. Yeah, good point. No. Yeah, Francis, yeah, that's not unusual for him. I've seen killers afraid to pass notes in church because the spirit of God was on them so much. Yeah. And that's what they use church for, to pass notes to get people to keep it out. And I see yeah. big, big guys afraid yeah. because of the spirit of God. Is I know. Yeah. From this church. That's yeah. From this church. I know. Good. Well done, sir. Rick is a good guy. Love him. Yes, sir. All right, any other questions or comments? Romans 8. Yeah, ma'am. 
Oh. I found you on YouTube. Oh, okay. Pain pills. Come on up here, hon. Tonight's addiction night. Yes. See that? See how it's setting up? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Addiction night. Have a seat right here. This is great. Oh, uh, you yeah. Sit there, sir. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Okay, I got one more oh. Amen. Well done. That's a great goal. Well done. Pray for that. Okay, now we're going to dismiss real quick, and then uh, ministry team, come up here real quick. I'm not going to take a break. I already see where this is going. Lord Jesus, uh, Romans 8, I got to tell you, Lord, that was, that was off the hook. Incredible, Lord. That was so beautiful. I can't believe it. It was just, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. And thank you for Rick's wonderful ministry yes. at the jail. All them guys getting delivered and healed yes. over there. It's just, I ain't got the words for that one either. Lord, it's fantastic. Literally fantastic. And tonight is addiction night. Lord, I see what you're doing. And we're going to go right to our prayer time. We'll dismiss our friends that are here. And Lord, you're going to heal and deliver these children that you knew long before they were born. You called them long before they were born, and you knew they would become addicts and called them anyway. Yes. And you preordained them to be on that glory bus, knowing beforehand they would become addicted, alcohol, Drugs, prescription drugs, food, sex, gambling. You already knew that ahead of time, and you called them anyway. I have nothing, Lord, to tell you but thanks. Amen. Thank you for loving us when we were unlovable. I have been there myself, a rotten unlovable person. I know how to do that. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed. Thanks for coming for the Deep Things of God. That's on our YouTube channel. Just put in Deep Things of God and all these teachings will come up, okay? If you want to get in the Healing and Deliverance Ministry streamers, go to the YouTube channel and hit the Deliverance Training channel. There's 18 sessions on there. You go through those 18 sessions and you will have all the basic knowledge you need to enter the healing and deliverance ministry and you will save yourself years of failure and trial and error and mistakes okay I didn't have anybody to help me when I started so I made all the mistakes you could make I made all the errors you could make and so I tried to streamline it as best I could so you could get that training and save yourself time and energy and everything else okay go to there on YouTube deliverance training channel in Jesus' name, amen. All right? Now, uh, <clears throat> can you three stand up here real quick?
You see right there. Leave your bottle there. Stand up here. All right, streamers, now face me. There you go. Face me. Now, let me talk to you, streamers. I'm, at, I'm talking to these three while I'm talking to you. All addictions, all addictions are a bifurcated issue. There's a spiritual component to an addiction, and there's a physical component to it. Depending on what kind of chemical you're using, the physical aspect varies. And the withdrawals vary when the person is detoxed. So someone that is addicted to cigarettes may have different withdrawal symptoms than somebody addicted to heroin. Okay? But the spiritual component is very similar in all addictions. See, and this is what Rick deals with at the jail. It's called by, all addictions are caused by unclean spirits. That's what the Bible calls them. And these demons get into the person's body in the womb, in childhood, young adulthood, uh, sometime during trauma periods, accidents, injuries, abuse. There's all kinds of different things and all kinds of different circumstances that allow unclean spirits to enter a person's body. Once that spirit gets in there, he then starts to use your personality against you. Yes. Your hurts, your wounds, your frustrations, your anger, your bitterness, your sorrow, your sadness, whatever is coming out of your soul is what he latches onto. He holds onto your soul. Your soul is where your emotions come out of. You feel with your soul. You're born again right now in your spirit not your soul. <clears throat> hey, do you mind turning that light on in the corner there? Did what I say make sense? Yeah. Did you hear me? Okay. Streamers, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a bifurcated issue. Now, if you go through NA or AA or a rehab program, what's the problem there? God's second. Okay? They don't take the spiritual component into account. That's why this relapse rate is so high and the CNS rate is so low. It's about 3% on NA, AA, about 3%. Even if you stop using the drug, it doesn't mean you're cured. Here's why. Some people with very strong wills and minds can, with enough support, break an addiction temporarily. That's me. Temporarily. Okay? But then the devil, he doesn't mind that. He doesn't panic at all. The demons go, well, they're not using right now, but we are planning these circumstances for them that are negative. Here's your mom and dad, husband, wife, kids, job, and this stuff's going to cause them triggers. So the spirits are organizing negativity in your life to trigger you to use again. Yes. And it works mm -hmm. in almost every case. So what do we do? Okay. What do we do? The only way to stop that trigger and overcome it is to... Use God's Word and the Holy Ghost to renew your mind and cast out the unclean spirit. If the unclean spirit is in your body, like the guys in, the, in your pod, almost all of them will relapse if he's still in there. You have to get the spirit out. You have a, if you have a spirit of infirmity in your brain, we have to get him out of your brain. Does that make sense? Yes. Or he will never recover. It's the same way for a physical illness. If you got cancer, tuberculosis, whatever you got, if you have a spirit of infirmity in there, if you don't get that spirit out of there, that person will 
relapse even after they've gone through chemo and surgery. Five years later, six years later, put the cancer comes back. And they're going, how did that happen? The spirit that had the cancer wasn't removed. Once the addiction demon or the unclean spirit is removed, then the person now has a chance to renew their mind on God's word, have clarity, exactly, Robert, have clarity, and can be free forever and be healed. I've just been kicked out of my house. <clears throat> That's good. Now, let, he just said he'd been kicked out of streamers. He just said he'd been kicked out of his house for drinking. That is great. Here's what's going on. The devil's beating the crap out of this guy. Mm -hmm. But behind the scenes, the Holy Ghost is watching it. And he's using his misfortune to save his soul. My parents have called me, my brother-in-law, everybody, all day today. Just talking to me and something's okay, well, happening it's just okay well what's happening is this sir uh, I don't care who called you today or why they called you if we don't get that unclean spirit of alcohol out of that body this dude is going to die yes that it's guy right there he's yeah. gonna die all the guys in the pod if they don't get the unclean spirit out they will relapse you can run this by Rick if you don't believe me so we got to figure out, for example, how you got in that condition. It's usually something in childhood. Did somebody hurt you when you were young? Um, and my dad left. Your dad abandoned you? Did he leave the family? And how old were you? Twelve. Did that hurt you? Yeah. Sure. What's your dad's name? John. John, is he still John. alive? He's dead now. Okay, and then after John, at age 12, something else hit you. You married? Yes. How many, uh, you had a, how many marriages you got? Two. Was the first husband abusive? Um, he, not really, yeah, kind of, a little bit, but not too bad. He was more abusive to other people. Did he cheat on you? No. Why did you divorce him? I just didn't love him. You I married him and you didn't love him? I loved him. I thought I did at first. I was thought 19, you did. like 19. Okay. And then that was, you were 19 when you got married, and your dad left at 12? Mm -hmm. Did anything really bad happen in between that date? You know, I keep thinking about it. There's really nothing I can think of. But then again, my, my memory is like... Okay. And then when did you start using prescription drugs and why? Um, I started heavily, <clears throat> probably after I got in a car accident, but I'd always like sought them out for fun, um, but kind of, you know, you get a prescription. Okay, is it oxycodone or something like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so come on over here. All right, now streamers, we got a, a ga beautiful woman here uh, who is uh, addicted to oxycodone or painkillers or something, but the demons got her because she said something just a second ago. Did you hear what she said? She said she was using it recreationally. That means she liked it. So that means if the devil can get you to like something he likes, he'll take you. He took her. Okay. Right? Now, you got hurt as a kid what? I didn't get hurt. I, what happened? I, part, I grew up in a, you know, in a country club environment. And okay. A lot of just fun drinkers around, like early. Right. 13 years old. 14, 15 years old. Okay, good. Then yeah, after that, what just, happened? Just no, well, hold on just a sec. Yeah, just hold on. Just let me ask the questions because the streamers are listening. Okay. Now, after you grew up recreationally drinking, then as you got older, did something bad happen to you? Something, no. I mean, <clears throat> uh, well, yeah, actually, yes. I'm not, this is horrible to say this, but I'm not able to have sex with my wife. And, and now what age did that start? six years ago and it's the family's almost over because of it okay did the drinking pattern change after that the drinking pattern has gotten worse last year I've been last year why until I don't know all of a sudden I just like I have a it, I drink to feel normal as yeah. opposed to just have fun and when did you get saved I was saved when I was like seven years old and then have you ever spoken tongues um, and, you know I, I think the first time I really had the, the, that experience was with the Nigerian 
guy like, here. Yeah, here. Okay. And, I and think then that, that was a couple weeks ago, and I think yeah. there's there's like a battle going on. For Have you ever hated right somebody? Now. No. Have you ever hated yourself? Probably. Yeah, I do right now. Because yeah. of, of drinking. Okay. So before the stop. age of five years ago, your drinking was you were functionally drinking. Yeah. Were you an alcoholic at that time? Functional alcoholic. Okay, so here's a case where the demons didn't get in through trauma. They're similar to hers. See, he was recreationally using it, and he liked it. So the devil said, oh, you like it, do you? Well, I'm going to gradually outsmart you over the years, and we're going to accelerate that usage, see? And then we're going to give you a piece of trauma. Bang! Five years ago, you became, had ED. Okay? So that caused a ripple in the family and in his self-concept and developed low self-esteem. So the devil ramped up the drinking over a period of time. He's very patient. And now they've got him in the death throes. Yeah. All right. So tonight what he's going to do is repent of this insanity and turn his heart over to the Lord in tears. And Robert's going to help him right now. Close your eyes. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm so sorry. So incredibly sorry. What happened? I don't know if I'm a mom with the executed by right now. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for this to happen. You saw it. Good house. You heard the gunshot? I wasn't there, but I did. I did. What was her name? Deborah. And who did it? Her husband, your stepdad? He was a big co -handler. Your stepdad? What was his name? Rayburn Ishmael. Rayburn Ishmael, okay. Great. Now close your eyes there. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hands just for a second. Good. Thank you, Lord. Father, you see this guy from the jail over there? He's a beauty. By the way, thank you so much for the years you gave me over there at the county jail and the prisons. I saw so many people healed and delivered. It was an honor to watch it. And I was never ceased to be amazed how fast the Holy Ghost jumps on convicts. How deeply he loves them and how fast he wants to get to them. He loves convicts. And I know that personally. I saw it with my own eyes. Lord, something horrible happened to this man when he was a child. His father was an addict and a dealer. His stepfather, and <coughs> he murdered his mother in cold blood. A spirit of murder and rejection entered this body. <coughs> they let in an unclean spirit, and he began to use. And tonight, that filthy thing is coming out of there. And he is turning his life completely over to the Lord. Gum. Gum. Yeah, gum in your mouth. Hold that. Take a big breath. Take a big breath. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit. If his stepdad was standing here right now, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, we are to love our enemies. We are to bless those who curse us, and we are to pray for those who despitefully use us. And if he was standing right here, what was his name again? Ray, you murdered his mother. You shot her in the face. And then the demon stole his soul right on the spot. And we would forgive you if you were standing here right now. We would forgive you. We would bless you right now. The house of healing would bless you. Everybody here would bless you. We would ask God to save your soul and forgive you. Because she wasn't the only person you shot. You murdered a bunch of other people. The devil's got his target on your back for the gates of hell. But that spirit that came from him... Needs to leave this man of God right now. Keep blowing. Come out of there. Stepdad, come out. 
Come out. Right now, come out, spirit of murder. Keep blowing. Come out. Come out of my chest. Come out of my lungs. Unclean spirit of addiction. Come out of my body right now. Unclean spirit of addiction. Come out right now. Unclean spirit of sexual addiction. I command you to come out of my body right now. Pray harder. Come out of my body right this second in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. I command you to come out in the name of the Lord. I command you in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of murder, drugs, alcohol, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Prescription drugs, I repent of using recreational drugs, recreational alcohol, and living in sin. I repent of it right at this very moment. I repent of serving Satan and falling into his trap. Come out. Give it away. You give Get it away right, right now. Right now. Come, come out right now. Come out. Come out of my body right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out here. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. You murderer. I release my stepdad from my soul right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And the old hatred I had for him that drew in the demons. I release it in Jesus' name. I forgave him, you rotten devil. I do not hate him anymore. I command this spirit to leave me right now. Come out right this second. Come out right this second. That's not your home. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out. Go now. Come out, you stinking demon of death. Spirit of death, I command you to come out. Go right now. Go right now. The booze demons are coming out of this guy right now. If he doesn't stop, he can get healed tonight. Do not stop. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You take that verse right now and use it. I command the spirit of addiction, this lust for alcohol and drugs. I hate you. I hate you with all I have. I command the spirit of sex and lust and food and gambling. I bind your power, you unclean spirit. I command you to come out of my body right now. Right now. Come out of my lungs. Come out of my stomach. Right now. Come out now. Right this second. I said come out now. Now. Demon of food. Come out right now. Demon of booze. Come out now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Faster. There he is. Faster. Come out, you demon of death. I command this. All these evil spirits from the jail. If you've ever been in jail, you can't believe it. It's a beehive of demons over at the jail and the prison. It's one of the worst places you can be. There are demons everywhere in jail and prison. If you've been in the hospital, you went into a demon beehive. If you went into the hospital, you can get sick in the hospital so fast you wouldn't even believe it. There are demons all over the hospital. Duh, the spirits of infirmity are there. But you must take authority over them now. But you must hate the sin. You must hate the sin. You cannot get rid of a spirit that you do not hate. If you're okay with your brain injury, if you're okay with it, and you're adjusting to your disability, well, that's okay. Then you got to keep the illness. Come on now. You ask for the gift of hate. Streamers, listen to me carefully. The gift of hate is one of the greatest gifts you can ever receive. It will cause you to hate sin and hate booze and hate drugs. You're not done. And hate wickedness and hate evil and hate sickness and hate lust. It causes you to hate what God hates. It causes you to love what God loves. You must hate it or you will go back to it. If you don't hate it, you will go back to overeating. You will go back to prescription drugs. You will go back to booze if you do not hate it. Now, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. 
right now, right now in the name of the Lord. The gift of hate, fall on your people, Lord. The gift of hate, fall on your people, Lord. The gift of hate, fall on your people. I know, food, food feels good, sex feels good, alcohol feels good. Yes, but you must hate it now. Just hate it. I hate it. In the name of Jesus, I received the gift of hate. And I come in to devil. The Holy Ghost is now falling. He's here. Anything can happen. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Faster. Keep coughing. Come on, everybody, right now. The girl with the prescription drugs is getting healed right now. The demons are flying out of her. If you hate it, they will go. If you do not hate it, you got to live with it. Streamers, can you hear me? If you do not hate it, you got to live with it. If you hate sexual sin, but there's a part of you that likes it, the demons will not come out. If you like something about being gay, homosexuality, lesbianism, bisexuality, if there's something about it, even a little bit, that you like, the devil will not come out. Come on now. You better get the gift ahead and get it now. Satan, I bind your power. Go. Satan, I hate you. I hate you. Go. Go right now. Go. Satan, come out of me now. Get out of my body. Come out of here. Come out. Go now. I bind your power, you rotten devil. Unclean spirit. By the authority of the word of God. By the blood that Jesus shed. I command you to come out now. Get out of my body now. Come on now. Go. Go. Bitterness. Anger. Frustration. Hatred. Come out. Food demons, I bind your power. Streamers, if you eat for comfort, that is a sin. You're not supposed to eat for comfort. You eat because you're hungry. You don't eat for comfort. You got the Holy Ghost for comfort. Just repent of it right now. I repent of eating for comfort. That is a sin. The devil's trying to give me high blood pressure, diabetes, and a heart attack. I know what he's doing. I'm repenting of it right now. I'll repent. I'll repent of overeating. The Holy Ghost is my comforter. The Holy Ghost is my comforter. Satan, come out. Come out now. Come out now. Spirit of infirmity, I hate your guts. I want you out of my head. Now. Get out of my head. Right now, go. Right now, go. Come out of my head, I said. Spirit of infirmity, come out of my head right now. Go. Go. Come out of me. Come out. Opiates. I will fight. Opiates, come out. Come out. Medications, come out. Drugs, come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, you got to learn to fight. Fight harder right now. Tell him to come out. Fight harder. There he comes. Come out right now. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. So what's going on here? Point in and stuff. Back eight. Yeah. When did that start? Yeah, I was on all fours like two days from. I was on all fours like just oh, two days. How'd you hurt your back? Just it was from a sports injury from basketball. I oh, had okay. a back spasm. You went to therapy. Yeah. Came, but it was all you good. Speaking for, tongues? Yeah. Oh, it was all good for like a month ago. I mean, for it was all good for like a month, and then all of a sudden one night I. Was, um, one night you were laying in bed? One night I was laying in bed with my wife. What happened? And it just came up. Like, you know, what happened before that? Before that, I you had a fight with somebody. No, it was regular day. Were you watching something on TV? 
No, I didn't watch I was watching the Cardinals game. And the Cardinals had a tie, and I was so mad. And I was pissed. I was, I was, I was, I'd rather be with the Cardinals. Oh, okay. Huh? So I was yeah. mad that the Cardinals lose. I, I mean, basically lose. Yeah, and then right after that, something hit. Where? Right after that. Where at? Right there? It came back. Okay. And in the morning, I couldn't walk. And I was crawling. Okay, now just pray in tongues. Let me hear it. Okay. Okay, stop. Okay, let's fix that first. Now your gift of tongues, it's uh, legitimate, but it's uh, it's uh, similar to English. You would say stuttering. Okay. Because you're saying the same syllable over and over. Right, right. So that's easy to fix. Watch it. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> what do you think you're doing? You can take me down. I know. Put your hand on your head right here. Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you out of my brain right this second. Yeah. On this brain right this second. Come out of my head. There he is. Father God, forgive me. Forget, forgive me, Lord, for living in sin and living like a wicked sinner. I'm so sorry, Lord. Forgive me. God, forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. Tell him your there. Let your tears go. God, forgive me. I hurt my family. I failed as a husband. There it is, right there. I failed as a husband. It's a rejection demon. Come out of his head. I failed as a husband. I failed as a father. God, forgive me for what I've done. I've failed, Lord. Please forgive me for what I've done. Come on, let your tears go. Pray harder. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I failed. I failed as a Christian. I failed. God have mercy on my soul. I choose not to do it. I just choose to be lazy for some reason. Oh, you're lazy? Okay, that's going to be real bad with with uh, well, demons. Well, yeah, how'd you get mad? As far as from over what? I'm lazy when it comes to like getting myself back in shape and oh. back in the in like you know. How about spiritually, I'm, I'm are you really lazy? Good at sports and stuff. But spiritually, I mean, I, I'm I'm not really angry. What are you angry about? I was just angry because I couldn't perform. I I couldn't be the best I could be. That I could. Please forgive me, dear Lord. I'm so sorry I hurt you, and you love me anyway. Father, I'm so sorry I hurt you and I hurt my family. The Bible says if a man hurts his wife, his prayers are hindered. And I've been praying like crazy and I just realized it. My prayers are hindered. And tonight I'm going to repent of it. I'm going to repent right now. I'm going to repent of all the people I hurt in my family. I'm going to repent of hurting myself. And I'm praying and asking you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, forgive me. Help me, dear Lord. Please help me, dear Lord. Let your tears go, honey. Right now. Satan, I bind your powers. This is the end for me. I command, I command you in the name of Jesus. All mental urges to drink and fail and be a loser and be homeless, I command it to come out of me right now. Go. There he comes. Come out. There he comes. There he comes. There he comes. Hold that. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out quicker. There he comes. Go. Come out now. Quicker. Come out quicker. Come out, Satan. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, break your hold. Break your hold on him. Habakkuk chapter 3 brings a curse on alcoholism. I break that curse in Jesus' mighty name. The curse of alcoholism, Habakkuk chapter 3. Woe unto you that gives his neighbor strong drink, that makes him drunken, that makes him ashamed. Yes, the shame must go. Woe unto you. Yes. That curse must yes. break off the man of God tonight. Yes, that's it. Right now, Habakkuk right. chapter 3. Curse, I command you to break. Shame, break, broken. Break now. There he is. Here it comes. There it comes. Let's go. There it comes, breaking off. The Holy Ghost is here. Step in and take it. Just step in and take it. He's standing right in front of you. Let's go. If the Holy Ghost is here, anything can happen. Anything can happen. It's good, and it's good. Thank you, Jesus. Let your tongues go. You speak in tongues? You speak in tongues? I think so. Go ahead. Put that down. Close your eyes here. Excellent. Keep going. Louder. 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 Come over here, sweetheart. 
Come here, come here, sweetheart. Right there, speaking tongues loud. Louder. 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 You are angry and you're going to fight back. Fight back. Right now. Go he ahead and repent. What do you say? That he has anger towards himself for not being ready for his son. For what? For not being ready for his son. His son. Oh. Oh. oh, go ahead and repent. Go on, repent. And you're also repenting of putting sports and your family and your son and anything else ahead of the Lord, which is what you've been doing. Paul said in Romans that you are the slave of the master you serve. If you put something ahead of the Lord, you've got to pay the consequences. It's called sowing and reaping. This man is reaping a bad back because he puts stuff ahead of the Lord, but he's repenting right now in Jesus' name. You're going to repent right this second and be healed. Healed in Jesus' mighty name. Healed. All right, check it. Go like this. Go like that. What? It's what I needed. The hope that you're giving me. Okay, close your eyes. Lord, I'm asking you to forgive this big guy. He's doubting, and he's giving me a bunch of crap about hope. But I, I've been around too long to get a bunch of crap from somebody. Oh, me don't play crap. All right, right now, repent of unbelief and doubt of not receiving my healing. I'm repent. There, there you go. Say that. Good. Now he's on it. Man. Thank you for your ministry. You're coming back now, right? You're coming back here to renew your mind. You have, you have. Oh, you have to come. I can't just like. You can't. You won't survive. You have to. You have to. I don't. I don't care about donation. I want you healed. Oh, you have to keep coming back, or you're not going to make it. I'm warning you. I'm saying it on tape. I'm on YouTube. I'm warning you. You got. I honestly, I haven't done anything like. My wife just fed up with me. I'm in a hotel. Everybody's fed up with you. It's not just your wife, but it's not you. It's the demons. So I'm saying, like, I mean, it's not you. Father is not upset with you. He's not mad at you. It's the people that are mad at you. He's not mad at you. He likes you. But it hurts him when you hate yourself. That pains him. Go ahead and repent of it. God forgive me. God forgive me for hating myself. I'm so sorry. Because when I hate myself, I hurt you, Lord. Be healed now. Go. Heal. Back heal right now. We just heal right now. Come on, pray harder. Lord, let me be the father. Good. There you go. Keep praying, just like that. Pray harder. Pray harder. Fight harder. There you go. Good. Now you're doing it. Wish everybody would act like this guy that got healed of alcoholism. If I had him around, more of these, I'd get a revival around here. Pray hard. Lord, Jesus' name, you know my heart. You know my heart. You know, but you know my he knows your heart. He loves you. Come on now, let's pray hard. Jesus. I find that. Jesus. What's going on over here? Okay, I got a couple of things. I uh, think I have a... 
I, I think I'm having back issues. I'm in physical therapy for back issues from an injury. And um, then I, it seemed like I had a slip of disc. Um, when was the injury? Six years ago, but I finally just... How were you hurt? I'm sorry? How were you hurt? She fell. Oh. She fell down and hurt her back? Yeah. Yeah, I just hmm? slipped. I she slipped. 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 Slipped steps, okay. Yeah. And I right. my rotator cuff. And then I'm still having some... Um, Issues she's waiting, you know, like, I've already been here to pray for my thyroid and my face to clear. It's starting to go away. It's like no. I'm getting a week and like it's working in reverse. And then like, it was like trauma. Trauma to my back. Trauma to my body. Like Satan just is having a hate it. Yeah. Now, now, let's uh, back this up a little bit. The injury issues are from the fall. The, the thyroid stuff is before that. That's that's emotional. No, you didn't. There's so we missed something. Otherwise, it would have been gone. Yeah, I think. Okay, now what are we missing? Let's think about it. Lord, tell her what we overlooked. Uh, does it make you feel less than? Does it make you feel kind of small? Like, because Are you the first husband? Are you the only husband? I'm sorry? Are you the only husband? Yeah. Okay, years ago. I am not his only wife. Uh, years ago, did you guys fight a lot? When you were younger? <laughs> We've been fighting our whole marriage. We're finally learning how not to fight. Okay, and what's the disputes over? Usually. Yeah. Now. God's been healing us. He's been really doing a lot of work in us. Uh, what's your childhood like then? Oh. Oh. Thursday. Now, uh, here's what it looks like happened to me. How old were you? Got married? Thirty-six. Okay. His. How old was he? Forty-nine. You met. You were thirty-six. You need forty-nine. That was your first marriage. Yeah. And it was second marriage. Third time, right? That was third marriage. Okay. So you married somebody heavily infected. Okay. So then his stuff transferred in here. Right? Then on top of that is the rebellion spirits. The fight for control. Okay. So that information allows me now to see we got bad problems here, right? And it's deep seated. It's not a I fell yesterday and hurt my shoulder. Uh uh. This is soul stuff. Soul stuff. So the thyroid won't clear up, and the spirits won't let her body heal. See? So, ideally, in God's world, we have a husband who loves his wife, as Christ loved the church. We don't have that here. They fight. Then we have a wife who loves her husband and submits. She won't submit because she doesn't trust him. Because he carried a bunch of baggage from marriage one, two, to three. See? She didn't marry a 16-year-old kid who was just kind of had a semi-fresh plate. He was 49. 40, 48? What did I say? I said 49. He was 49. I thought that's what he said. See? See, you've got this spiritual dynamic between couples. I'm not saying this to, to expose them. I'm just saying there's a million couples out here just like that. And I see them all the time. I run into this all the time. But there's more than appears to the eye. People are a lot deeper than what you see, right? And God loves them anyway. And he was called long before he was born. And so was she. Okay? 
So we got several layers here of issues that have to get fixed. So I'm seeing him Thursday, so we'll start taking swings at it then. Okay. So we may need to wait till Thursday. Love you. Thursday. Thursday at three. So basically all the all the coming Love here on, on the night coming here is gonna be enough. We it's really uh, need more than you need more. Yep. Since he's coming Thursday, then I need to make it. I, I would if I was you. I'm sorry. I would if I was you. There you go. Out in Jesus' name. Get mad. Yes. How you do? How'd you do in your anger? I'm feeling. Hmm? I'm feeling much much better. Where'd that guy go? That was here. He's in the bathroom. He's in the bathroom. Why don't you go get? Hmm? Would he fit in your group? Oh yeah, absolutely. Why don't you go get him? Okay. Get, there, no, there's nobody in that bathroom. Did that guy leave? That that guy leave? No, that talk, right there. that right guy there. there. Go get go. him. The guy, what's that guy's name? The red hair, red hat. What was your name? Tim. Tim, oh, it's a pleasure meeting you. Hey, uh, this guy's got a group. I want you to talk to him for a second. <coughs> Tim was your name? Okay. Hate. Hatred for your mother. Here. Here's hatred for your mother. Hatred for the devil. Bring it up here. The same level of disgust you have for mother. Let's do it. Mother. Sin. That's a good barometer. Streamers, listen to me carefully. If you have a problem with either of your parents, okay, and you dishonored them or degraded them, that brought a curse on your life, okay? If you degrade your children or your husband or wife or something, there's no curse attached to that. But if you do that to your parents, there's a curse that comes on you and it blocks your deliverance until you repent of that. So let's do it right now. Father, when I was young, I was foolish, I was stupid, and I was ignorant, and I was spiritually brain dead, and I hurt my mother and father. I said negative things about them, I trashed them, I called them dirty names, I called my mother a biatch, I called my dad a this and that, and I didn't know when I was young, when I did that, I brought a curse on myself. And I look back over my life now, and I can see it now. I get ahead financially, and then I collapse. I have a good relationship going, then it falls apart. I'm beginning to see now, Lord, that this curse has been on my life, and it has ruined my relationships. It's ruined my money. It's ruined my finances. It's ruined my friendships. And I look back, and I see it now. I see it. And I can remember when I was 7 or 8, 10 or 12, 16 or 7, teenager, young adult. I told my mother to go shove it. I told my dad to go s this and that. I didn't know I was heaping a curse on myself. I didn't know that. Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not dishonor thy mother nor thy father. And it's unqualified. Listen to me. Your parents did a lot of bad things, and I agree with them, and so does God. They shouldn't have done them things. But that doesn't give you license to trash your parents. You're going to repent of it right now. Let's break this curse off our souls. We can break this curse off right now. Father, I repent of my past sin of dishonoring, degrading, and hurting my mother and dad and disrespecting them. I had no respect for them because they said stupid things and they did stupid things. And I'll repent of it right this second. I see the spiritual failure I see my life now. My God, I'm middle-aged. I'm, I'm, I'm heading into my 40s. I'm not, pretty soon I'll be in my 60s like poor brother Mike. And my life, my life goes like this, Lord, up and then it goes down. Every time I seem to get ahead, all of a sudden something crashes on me. And that's my mother's curse. I told my mother off one day, and I am repenting of it right now. I'll rep I take every word I said to my mother back. I take every word I said to my dad. My dad was a sinful, evil man. I don't care. 
I take every rotten thing I said about my dad. He abandoned us. He left us. He ran off with another woman. He cheated on my mom. He beat the living stuffing out of me. I don't care what my dad did. I don't care. I don't care. I'm putting that under the blood right now, and I'm breaking this curse off of my life now. Right now. Right now. I hurt my mother, and I take it back. I take it back right this second. I need God to forgive me, and I'm not leaving here tonight until this curse is broken off of me. I'm sick of living like a loser and a failure. You've got to be kidding me. I'm a loser and a failure. Then I succeed for a while, and then everything collapses on me. I've had enough of this. This yo-yo thing is going out the door. I'm going to break this curse off my life right now. And on top of that, Lord, anybody else I cursed. Now that I'm thinking about it, I repent of that. My counselors, my friends, my teachers, my students at school, the people that hated me in grade school, the people that made fun of me, my first husband, my first wife, my second husband, my second wife, they were rotten people. They used me. They trashed me. Guess what, Lord? I'm forgiving them, and I'm releasing them from my soul. I'm doing it right this second. I'm going to repent in Jesus' holy name. And when I repent, the demons will lose their grip on my soul. They will lose their grip on my body. They will lose their grip on my life. Repentance and the blood of Jesus brings deliverance and healing. And I will repent tonight. I've got some people I need to apologize to. This guy who just got all these alcohol demons out, see him sitting there? He's going to start making some apologies starting tomorrow morning. If he has to, send an email out, make a call, send a letter. I'm so sorry I hurt you. I'm so sorry for what I said and what I did. All the money I wasted. I drank up thousands of dollars. And literally, like the Bible says in the Old Testament, I pissed it against the wall. I just pissed all that money that I wasted on drugs and alcohol that should have gone to my family that should have gone to my kids, that should have gone to something productive, at a minimum, Lord, I'm ashamed to say, this should have gone as a tithe or an offering, and I repent of it right this second. And I command him to come out of my head right now. Spirit, shake out of there in the name of the Lord Jesus. Seducing spirit, brain demon, mind control. We bind your power in the name of the Lord. Come out of that head right now. Come out of that head, I said. Stop shaking him and come out of there. Come out of that body right now. Lift out. Lift out right now. Come out of his brain. Right this second. Right this second. Love you. I love you, brother. You made my night tonight. Don't give up on me. You made my night. Thank you. What? Come out tomorrow night. Right here. Tomorrow night. I'm repenting of it right this second. Check this out. Check this out. He's on IPS, so he's only been out for a week. Okay. So he's on IPS and he's out of curfew right now and he's got to get back to Garfield. Oh, okay. So I gave him my card. I said, if there's any issues with the probation department, he needs help with that. Tell him he's joining Men of Valor. He's coming. He's working on his soul. He's changing. It's a whole program. So it shouldn't be a problem. But shouldn't? Hopefully, okay. Hopefully probation doesn't hit him and he has to go back. Thank you. What's going on? What's going on? Depression. Come on. What you depressed over? What? When did it start? As a child. Oh. Who hurt you? I'm distant from my dad. Was he unaffectionate? Was he verbally snappy? Did he? Was he a controller? Trying to put you under his thumb? Yep, that's it. Close your eyes. What's, your, what's his name? Keith. Keith. Okay, raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you see this beautiful woman standing here? She's got a good heart. I just took a look at her soul there. She's a kind person. She's a lover. She's a loving type person. But the devil got to her when she was little. The devil got her. Her dad's demons told him to be harsh with her. 
And a parent who is harsh with a loving, tender-hearted child damages them. Yes. Like stabbing them with knives in their soul. And that's what happened to her. Her dad was controlling and harsh. And he tried to control her with his words. And he hurt her soul. And she felt disconnected from her, her dad. And tonight, Lord, she's going to repent of what she has done. She thinks she needed a dad. She does not. She has a heavenly father who would never hurt her in a million years under any circumstances. And tonight we are going to remove her dad from her soul and this depression is going to leave her for the rest of her life. Her dad's depression and his demons are going to let the woman of God go. And she is of her own free will going to release her dad because she doesn't need dad anymore. She has father. Oh, when you got him, you got everything. 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 You don't need a dad anymore when you've got father. And what her dad did to her, we are going to forgive him in spades, in bunches. Father, we forgive him in the name of Jesus. We ask for mercy on his soul in the name of Jesus. Wherever he is tonight, we ask you to go find him, hunt him down, and put your loving hands on him and say, you don't ever have to hurt anybody ever again. I love you, says the Lord. I love you. I love you. And I know dad, her father, her dad, was wounded when he was a child. I know it. Somebody hurt him bad. He never recovered from it. He guarded himself. He wanted to love and be affectionate, but he couldn't do it. He couldn't bring himself to do it because he was wounded as a child. Just like you were wounded as a child. And so now it's time to break this generational curse off now. It's time to break it off now. I release my dad in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I let my dad go. And I give him to you, Lord, right now. And I replace my dad, my Heavenly Father. I replace him right now in the name of Jesus. In addition, did you have other abusive men after him? Nobody? Were you ever married? You married now? Is he verbally abusive? Is he controlling? Uh oh. Raise your hands. That was the other thing I was looking for. Okay, there's another bad male experience in this girl's life. Streamers, let me talk to you just for one second. If you are on porn, if your spouse is on porn, that's adultery. The Greek word is moikia. If it's heterosexual, if it's homosexual, it's pornia. It's called fornication. And lusting in your heart for some man or woman in a video is the same as committing sexual sin with the person. According to Jesus, if a man lusts after another woman in her heart, in his heart, he has com already committed adultery with that woman, and that is pornography. And to prove it, to prove it, she was devastated when she found out her husband, he's not on porn anymore, but he was on porn, and when she found out about it, she felt a wound enter her yes. soul right there. Yes. That's, right. That's why pornography is the same as adultery. Yes. Pornography is extremely dangerous. And she's going to forgive her husband right now and release that wound there it is. that jumped right in there 
when she felt he betrayed her, she felt betrayed. And that is contributing to her depression. So we got the husband's failure and the dad's harshness raising her. Two things that have now manifested in depression in this beautiful gal right here. Streamers, you following me? And she's going to repent of both of them right now. Lord, I cast off my dad's spirits from my soul. I release this lust demon that attacked my husband and encouraged him into pornography. And he betrayed me. And I felt betrayed. And I'm releasing that wound as well. Okay, take a breath. Like that. Blow. Go. Husband and dad, come out. Keep blowing. Come out of there. Come out. Okay, good. Blow again. Come out. Get out of there, buddy. Right now. Let her go. We forgive both those men. We bless them. Get out of her head. Depression, come out right now. All depression goes. Lift out of there. Lift up. Lift. Heaviness go in the name Lift up. Lift out of there. Come out. Lift out. Come out. Go. Right now. Let her go. Dad, go. Husband, go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Anything he did to me, he saw in those movies, I forgive him. And I release that wickedness and that lust. Any transfer spirits that came from him, I release them right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out right now and go. Speak in tongues. Go ahead. Good. Louder. Oh, that's excellent. She's got a nice gift of tongues. Louder. 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 Velo mashatara vashite. Ori mushindoro buba. Elo mashatara vashite. Ori mashandoro vashite reveria. Ondoro moshi valava. Yekola mashandoro vashite reve. Louder. Ulo mashandoro vashite reva. How are you feeling? I feel okay. She's coming back tomorrow. Coming tomorrow? Oh, good. Uh, her husband was on porn. And I think something transferred. What's her name? What's your name again, huh? Mary Catherine. Mary Catherine. Yeah, Mary Catherine. Okay, ready? Spirit husband, you are bound if you got in there through pornography, porn, and lust. We ask you to heal Mary now and cast that spirit out. You've done a great job praying tonight. See, that's how you do it. That was fantastic. You went right after it. They were coming out like crazy. You've done a beautiful job. You hear me? Love you. Streamers, I want to talk to you for a minute. Go to the website tonight. Go to the website. Every time we have a service here, the demons attack within 48 hours. They will try to attack you and steal anything you got here within 48 hours. You have to go to the website. There's a button on there. Love you. Thank you. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you. Love you. Please come back. I hope you will. Bye, sweetheart. Streamers, go to the website and hit the post deliverance button. You have to hit it. So that you do not lose what you have obtained tonight. Then click the teaching button and go to the article, How Satan Controls the Mind and Satan's Counterattack. It will show you exactly how you're going to get hit. Within 48 hours, they will come hunting you down. Tuesday night, I'm here to teach the deep things of God. Wednesday night is Inner Healing Night with Diane and Kelly. Thursday night, the faith leaders show up to pray for your illnesses. And Friday night, I'll be back again 
with another unusual Bible study. Until then, I'll see you next time.